Jesus. Power of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord God, right now we wanna we wanna sing a song for you, Lord. That only you, oh God, deserve. Father, it says in Revelation 4:11, You are worthy, O oh Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Amen. Amen, church. Lahat po siyang gumawa. It's created by Him, through Him, for Him. And yet God did not withheld anything from us. He offered, as we offer our lives, our worship, and our prayers, and as a sweet-smelling aroma of praise, let's declare that only He is worthy of it all. Amen? Father God, salamat po, Jesus. We praise no one. We exalt no one but you. <coughs> For you alone are God. Open up our hearts, Lord, and as we worship you, Father, as we worship you, O oh God, we will be ignited, O oh God, by your love, messed up by your love, worked by your love, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes, Jesus, we worship you.
have never worshipped him before. I believe the God of the breakthrough, the God who will meet you, Lord, is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? So right now, let's worship him. Let's give him the praise. Let's give him the, the exhortation that he needs. That he doesn't need, actually, but he deserves. Amen? So let's just sing it without an instrument. I exalt thee. Come on, church.
Ask your neighbor why. Why? Because he loves you this much. Yes. Yes. And this much, this much, that he gave his only son to die for us. So if you you tithe in offering, because it's just one action, it's just one way for us to show our love, our devotion, our worship to the God who gave us everything, to the God who cannot withhold anything from us, kahit ganon niya tayo kamahal. So what is ten percent? Ano po? What is ten percent? It's nothing. It's nothing compared sa kung ano yung ginagawa ng Lord sa buhay natin. Tama po? By all of our needs. Lahat ng pangangailangan natin. Amen? Do you, mean, do you believe that, Church? Parang hindi naman ako satisfied sa amen natin. Tapos isang shout of amen. Okay, one, two, three. Amen! Yun. So, each time na ginagawa natin, we are being reminded that God is able. Are we looking for, sino yung kinagahanap ng trabaho? Amen. Do you know that God cannot just supply your your job? God is able to create a job for you. Yes. And all you need is to all we need is to act on our faith and believe that He is able. Tama po? Amen. So habang natin binibigay ang ating tithes and offerings sa Panginoon, hindi natin sa ating mga puso yan. Now, whatever any breakthrough that you're praying for, favor, blessing, uh, relationship, whatever it is, ibigay natin yan sa Panginoon because He has has done it all. He has given it all. Ano pa ba yung hindi kaya ibigay ng Panginoon sa atin? Amen po? Okay, so pwede na po natin ibigay ang ating mga kalaw. Sa Panginoon naman yung mga ngiti sa ating mga labi. Yan. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. So let us all stretch our right hands sa ating kalawag. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we bless your name, Panginoon. Thank you, Lord God, that whenever we expect and we are hungry, Lord God, Lord, you meet us, Lord God, in the midst of it. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, because even we walk in this hall, Lord God, your presence is already here. God, we just thank you for you are good and you are, you are great, Panginoon, in all our circumstances, Lord God. Might ask, Lord God, in our tithes and offerings, and let our, her, our hearts, Panginoon, burn for you, Lord God. Burn for you, Panginoon. Lord, we just thank you and we bless you. And we declare, Lord God, that you will use this tithes and offering, Lord God, to reach more souls, Panginoon, and for the furtherance of your kingdom. And all the children and saints of God will shout, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister May. Right. Uh, announcement. Uh, pagkatapos po ng service po natin, mayroon po tayong practice po sa, sa handmind po natin. Doon po tayo sa uh, Dyson family, di ba? Sa The Brother Fair. Okay? That's... Dalaman niyo yung mga requirements para sa practice mamaya. Dala-dala. Para hindi... Dala-dala lahat. Ah, uh, okay. Pwede bang, parang tahimik tayo lang at ngayon na ito. Pwede bang palakpakay natin ang Panginoon? Yung palakpakay natin ang Panginoon sa atin. Hallelujah! Alright, hindi ko na, alam ko na, hindi ko na, hindi ko na po lahat, hindi ko na patagalin po ba. Uh, uh, tawagin ko yung preacher ko today. It is really show po na it admires me so much na Sir Tom Sanchez po, hindi po hadlang na magturo sa Panginoon. Okay? Hindi po hadla, even what other trials circumstances is not the hindrance to preach His word. That is exactly what we will do today. Our beloved pastor and founder for His Grace Combinator, para pakamba natin ang Panginoon sa buhay ni Pastor J. Ray Jokla.
Some of you will know that I used to have an open wound on my face. And it was not healing because my eyeglasses were resting on So, my Brazilian friend, he's a pastor and I minister in his church every time there are five Fridays. So, three times, uh, four times a year I minister in his church. He invited me to come to his clinic and he said he would take care of his problem. So I went on Tuesday uh, I expected his problem to come to the and it would take a few minutes. But he did a pretty complicated operation. He did a skin graft in which he took some skin from behind my left ear and stitched it. He cleaned up the wound and stitched it over the wound. So that was on Tuesday. So this is why I'm like this. Anyway, hopefully next time you'll see me. I'll be but I'm becoming more poor <laughs> All right, let's go into the word of God. How many of you can tell me what is your real purpose in life? Do you know your purpose? What are you living for? What is God's purpose for us? To train us to live by faith. To train us to live by love and faith. What did Jesus say the most important commandment? He was quoting Deuteronomy 6.5 and says the most important commandment in the law is you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. And Habakkuk 2.4 says the just. The word just in the Bible means righteous. You cannot be accused. You are okay in terms of God's justice. You are acquitted in terms of God's justice. So the just shall live by faith. Habakkuk 2 4. And so important, it's quoted three times in the New Testament Romans 1 17, Galatians 3 11, and Hebrews 10 38. Okay? And Romans 14 23 says, Whatever is not of faith is faith. So please understand how important faith is. Love and love. Right. And God is, as we have keep sharing a call, so God is raising an army that will change this world. I like some of the songs you are singing. Okay. So our goal is to change the world. God wants to have an army that's going to change this world. And we are His army. And we become strong according to how much faith we have. Pastor, can you give me my my, uh, yeah, because I want to, I find I'm getting a little cold on top. <laughs> getting a little cold on top. Okay. Alright. So, because he's building an army, you can't say, I believe. The Bible says, even the demons believe and tremble. We have to prove our faith and our love by how we live. That's why James 2, 17 and 26 says, faith without works is dead. We have to prove our faith by the way we live. So, the most important thing is to make Jesus the main purpose of our life and his kingdom. That's why we put it in our purpose statement for every believer to be like Jesus and for the church and the world to establish the kingdom of God. But when you actually study, when you come into the practical world and see things that are happening, unfortunately we find that many Christians are actually putting the things of the world and the flesh above the things of God. Let's look at Matthew 6, 19, and 19 to 21 and see what Jesus says. Matthew 6, 19 to 21. 
Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. See, there are some people, they work in companies, and I know quite a few. See, I minister in many churches, and I know quite a few people. Right? Dubai Church, Shaja Church, now I'm being invited to minister in another church, and Brazilian church, and so on. And I minister in a lot of churches, I minister to hundreds of Philippines. There are some people who are working in companies, especially here in Dubai, Dubai and Shaja. And those companies say, you got to work for, or those bosses say, you got to work for me even on Friday. So those people cannot come to worship God, or hear the word of God, or to be in the presence of God, which should be the most important spiritual food. That's it. Can't even come every Friday to worship God in His presence. And they keep them working till 7 or 8 o'clock in the night, so that there is no time for those people to get involved in any kind of ministry. No time to share the gospel and win souls. No time to be involved in worship ministry. No time to organize or support a cell group. No time for the Lord. Their time is swallowed up by their employer. And these people, I'm speaking of believers, they are unable, you know what I'd do if I was a Christian in such a place? I'd say, as quickly as possible, find another job. Or even without finding a job, another job, I'd say, boss, I'm not, you don't own me. Jesus owns me, so I'm leaving. I don't care a hang for your stupid company. I belong to Jesus. Your company and your salary is not my security. I will go. Find myself a job. Or God will find me a job. Matthew 6, 19 says, Do not lay up for yourself. Don't run after money. Treasures on earth where moth and rust. Destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy. And thieves do not break in and steal. So people might have money in this world, but they'll be bankrupt in heaven. It's much better to have your wealth there because when you're there, you're there forever. For where your heart is, or where your treasure is, there your heart will be. So who is our security? The just shall live by love and faith. Love and faith are basically the same thing. Agape love and faith are. Faith is the proof of love and faith without works is there. And word of God goes on to tell us, Jesus tells us very clearly in that same passage of scripture in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6, 33, what does it say? Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. I'm sure you know it. Key principle in the kingdom of God. Put God first and His kingdom work. Make it your number one priority of your life. Serve God with all your heart, mind, soul, and soul. And guess what? God will look after all your needs. You don't have to run after money. When you make Jesus your good shepherd, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the And you will dwell in the house of God forever. So when we make Jesus our real first love, and everything, Jesus should be everything. He takes care of everything. 
and everything that we need to live a blessed life. But I don't want him. Sometimes, you see, sometimes he delays his blessing. Why? Because he's training us to live by faith. Sometimes God deliberately delays his blessing. It's not that the blessings are not coming. They will come. But he wants to test our faith. So to prove our faith, we just keep postponing the day when you get your blessing. You know, he told Abraham, I'm going to make you the father of my people. But he did not give him the promised son until Abraham was 100 years old. He put the vision in Moses' spirit that Moses is going to be the leader and deliverer of Israel. And deliver them from Egypt, where Moses had been a prince for the first 40 years of his life. He put that vision in Moses' heart. But what did God do? He first sent Moses into the wilderness. For how long? For 40 years. 40 years training. In GCC, we don't have 40 years. Sometimes God's training programs are much tougher than ours. 40 years crucifixion to all his self confidence. Because God is not interested in our ability. He's only interested in our faith. Our, our surrender. Then He will work through us. He is interested in His ability working through us. So Moses had to be crucified. Forty years ago. Before God said, okay, now you have been fully burnt out. You have no self-confidence at all. Now come. Now I can use you. Moses said, I am 80 years old now. Come on. Why did he use me 40 years ago? God said, it's not about you, Baba. It's about me. Okay. He told David, when David was 12 years old, God sent Samuel the prophet, and Samuel prophesied, you're going to be king. And David received the Holy Spirit when he was 12. But when did David become king? When he was 30, 18 years old. After he had spent at least eight years in the wilderness, running away from his king who was trying to kill him. When Jesus was 12 years old, the Father put, the Holy Spirit put the vision that he must be doing his father's business. He was 12. But God did not allow Jesus to begin his ministry until he was 30. 30 is the perfect age in the kingdom of God. So Jesus also had to wait in See, so in this context, let's look at an interesting scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose. There are two words for time in the Bible. One is chronos, which means the passage of time. Time is passing. Any of you know that famous watch called the Omega Chronometer? Most of us might say good. Yeah. But the Omega Chronometer means it's a good name. Meter of time. Because the Greek word for the passage of time is chronos. C-H-R-O-N-O. The other word for time in the in Greek and in the Bible is Kairos. K-A-I-R-O-S. That is, God has a special specific time for every purpose. So you may say, I want to I want to get into this ministry. I want to go to the United States and take over the United States. I believe I got the anointing and I can preach. God will say, take it easy. It's not your time. Oh, it's not my purpose. 
I'm not sending you to the United States, I'm sending you first to Africa. Anyway, we gotta wait on the Lord and know what is God's plan and purpose. And what is God's Kairos time? God has got a time and a purpose for everything. So we have to wait for his time. Now let's read Ecclesiastes 3 11. Ecclesiastes 3 11. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put an eternity in their hearts. Except that no one okay, can... Okay, I just wanted to say. In your heart, you know that beautiful old song? You may hope with you in your heart. Okay. Learn these 30 year old songs also, okay? Not only planet shape. Yes. Yeah. All right, God makes all things beautiful in His time. Yes. So we got to know God's time. And we have to patiently wait for that right time. You know, I've, I've been involved in ministry. I've ministered to thousands of brethren over the past 25 years. There's so many examples. I've known them as a brother, married, Family, he only earning about 2,500 years. And he was in this situation for many years. And we never thought that he's going to get a promotion. But then suddenly, bang, he gets promoted and he's now earning 10,000 dollars. I know another brother. He was a FedEx delivery man. Some of you may know who I'm talking about. He came to me for prayer, I prayed for him. And I prophesied and said, within three months you're gonna become a senior manager in a company. And it happened. That's exactly what happened. And he became a senior manager. Huge job. Part-time FedEx delivery man. To senior manager. Some of you may know Richard and Charlotte Malianka. They were in the Dubai church. Um, at one meeting I said, hey, there are two empty chairs in the front row. Anybody comes and sits here, God will bless you. So a couple came from behind. The guy had earrings and 40 days. He was an artistic guy. An advertising man, designer. So anyway, they came up and uh, during the altar call, they came for prayer. They said, bless us, we want blessing. I prayed for them. Then I went to the stage. The next uh, about three or two weeks, three weeks after that, while I was in the stage, Brother Richard came up and said, Pastor David, you know, said, if you come to the front, you'll be blessed. He said, he prayed for us. And guess what? We've been married for 10 years and could have a child. Now, Shalom is praying. So they had got their first baby. One year later, they came for deliverance and got the second child. But in the meantime, Richard is saying, I'm still struggling financially. I think I can get a much better salary than what I'm getting. He was earning about 4,500 or something. Anyway, another two, three years passed. Then he got a job offer from Doha. The salary was 10,000 a month. Uh, not real, not real dollars. So he went to Doha, where he was earning 10,000 dollars. From 4,500 to 10,000 dollars. And then they been in Doha. So, it is time. Mm -hmm. But we should not doubt, or don't try to say, oh, I am expecting a big jump in salary. Our main goal must be to serve people. Let's be very clear. Now, I was 
We started GCC in 2001 and I was, I was still doing business at that time. And I started three businesses in the year 2004. Praise the Lord, they all crashed. At the end of 2004, you had the Asian tsunami. December 26, 2004. 350,000 people died. And I said, this is a sign that we are living in the last days. So, from 1st of January 2005, I said, I'm going to go full time. From now on, I will just serve the Lord as a pastor. No more running after money. I will run after Jesus. I was not expecting anybody. I just said, this is, we are now in the end time. So, I got to serve the Lord full time. Guess what happened? Immediately after that, our family income increased five times. While I was working, running after money, total family income was about 25,000. My salary, my two sons and my wife, about 25,000. But I stopped working, all of them got big promotions and now the family monthly income is over 100,000. As soon as I went, a couple of months after I went full time. So put the Lord first and see what happens. Test Matthew 6, 33. Yes. See for yourself. So, I'm going to have been talking about employment and income. But I also want to talk today about the most important decision that we have to make in life, apart from next to the decision of accepting Jesus and getting saved. I think possibly the second most important decision we have to make in life is for choosing the right marriage partner. Oh no! Much more important than finding a job. Because the job you can get out and start again. But once you get married, you are more or less stuck in that for the rest of the life. <laughs> and it's sad but true that very often, if you find the right marriage partner, you'll be experiencing ever after. But if you find the wrong one, then you'll be experiencing hell after. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any amen to that? I'm sorry, I've been, I've been living on this earth for 77 years and I have a lot of experience of people and what they're going through. Fortunately, in the church, I think most of our couples are experiencing heaven or something close to it. But not heaven. Okay? <laughs> But outside, in the world, <coughs> there are a lot of couples who are really strong. Right? It's either hot war or cold war. <laughs> Cat and dog fighting. Right? Or getting separated, divorced, and all that. It's true. Marriage is a very critical a very critical decision. And it can affect the quality of your life. For the rest of your life. So you've got to be very, very careful. And what? And you must help in everything. See what the heart see how the word of God guides us. Read three for me. Second Corinthians chapter six, fourteen and fifteen. First rule of marriage. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 and 16. Do not be equally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness, and what accord has Christ with Belial, or what part has a believer with an unbeliever, and what agreement has the temple of God with idols. 
for you are the temple of the living God. Okay, thanks. Very strong. Do not be unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. First rule of, for a Christian, do not marry an unbeliever. Sometimes, very rarely, you might have a miracle. I will not mention any example. But, it's a principle. And very strong. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Satan? Belial is Satan. And what part has a believer with an unbeliever? So the first rule, when you are choosing your partner in life, make sure he or she is a believer. Okay. Now what did I say is the most important purpose in life? To serve Jesus Christ. To live by faith and love. Obviously, if you can get married to a non-believer, that's going, you know, serving Jesus Christ is going to become extremely difficult. It's going to be extremely difficult for you to live by faith. On top of that, you have to make sure what kind of believer you are married to. There are many people who use the label, I'm a Christian. But are they real? Are there Christians who have that, that, that vision, that purpose? That if you are a Christian, you've got to live for Jesus. You've got to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and that You have to put Jesus first in your life and you've got to live for Him. You've got to serve Him as much as possible. And if possible, even get out of companies that don't allow you to serve God. And get out of every situation that blocks you from serving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and giving Him your best and being filled with the Holy Spirit. So don't get married even if a person says, I'm a Christian. I you just make sure that that person is a real Christian, a nominal Christian, or a phony Christian. My strong suggestion is look for somebody who loves Jesus more than he or she loves you. Amen. Find somebody who is really on fire for the Lord. Who wants to study the word of God and wants to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he's doing that, living like that. Because otherwise, hey, God has called every one of us to be a potential champion in the kingdom of God. God wants everybody here to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to continue to grow spiritually. To continue to grow from faith to faith and glory to glory. Not to get stuck or not to go backwards. And if you are married to the wrong person, that progress is of very But God is going to bless you. If you put it in Matthew 6, 30, seek first the kingdom of God and his life. And all these things, including marriage partners, will be here. Second rule. Don't be hasty in getting married. Don't jump into a marriage without checking your prospective partner very, very carefully. Because your whole life and your whole future and the future of your children depends on it. There is an English saying, marry in haste, repent in leisure. You'll be repenting for the rest of your life. All right? Make sure you know that person 100%. There are many people with, with hidden problems. 
So spend at least nine months or one year getting to know your prospective partner before you go and make things legal. Okay. There are some some, some guys, they they a girl, they might be having another parent of girls. Nice Medicate. Or they may be having debts, huge debts that are hidden. Or they may be compulsive gamblers. I have no such example. They are compulsive gamblers and as a result they have huge debts. Or they have drug addicts or porn addicts. Or we are married partner might just also happen to be gay. I'm not spinning thoroughly. These are all true, unfortunately. So spend a lot of time checking out your prospective partner. Your, the future of your life and your family will depend on. You know, unfortunately, you know, there is Kronos time. Time keeps passing. And once you get into your thirties, single start getting best for it. <laughs> A little bit of panic. Time is passing. When will God's Kairos time happen? The Kronos time is happening too much. And then, the first person who shows interest, you jump. <laughs> say, ah, hey, hey, God, I got sorry. But then you find out all kinds of bad things. Be careful. That's all I say. Don't get desperate. I know one sister. She's now in her 40s. She's a single mother of four kids. Five years ago, her husband was killed in a fight in the Philippines after a hot fight. Husband got into a fight after a hot fight and got killed. The same year, one of her sons died. Now this lady is working in Dubai, earning about three or four thousand a month, and she has to look after four children. In her body. Now, as it happens, she's very beautiful. And her old part, her old friends, before she became, she became a Christian after her husband died. And she was brought to me, and we did deliverance for her. And she, she's a strong woman, very strong. But her old friends keep telling her, "Why don't you come and spend time sitting in a bar?" There are plenty of guys who come to the bar and you can earn a lot of money because she's very beautiful. She did not even think about it because she's such a strong Okay, I know that God will be born in his life. Anyway, before closing this message, I want to tell you a story. See, what I'm trying to tell you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In His time, He will make all things beautiful in your life. Amen. Don't try to rush into something without being careful. Okay? So the story I want to tell you is about a very famous man of God called David Yogi Cho, some of you know him, right? He is the head of the world's largest church, the Yoido Church in South Korea. When he began his ministry in 1960, South Korea was a 100% Buddhist country. Thirty years later, Yogi Cho's ministry had grown because he was a man of faith. And 
In the Oedo church used to have uh, the, one of the largest buildings in Seoul and it, they had five services every Sunday. And they have one, one million, uh, one thousand millionaires in their church. And because of the ministry of people like Yonggi Cho, by 1990, 50% of South Korea had become Christian. In 30 years, 100% Buddhist country becomes 50% Christian country. This is why I am so hopeful we can do the same thing in the Philippines. Hello, I said something. <laughs> Do you believe we can do it in the Philippines? Yes. Yes. Let's, let's work on it. So anyway, Young Ito is to, after his Yoido church was well established, sorry, uh, sorry, he has one million million years in his church. Okay, I couldn't believe it, but it's true. Just checking my notes. But he used to also go visiting other churches in the country. And one day he went to a church in the country as a visiting pastor. And after he had uh, ministered in the church, the pastor of that church said, I wanted to pray for, for somebody in this congregation. And Yogi said, sure, who is it? And he said, it's a lady. He said, what's her problem? She can't find a husband. Okay. So they were in a private room and a nice lady in her thirties walking. Alright. So Yogi Joe said, Sister, how long have you been praying for a husband? She said, ten years. Oh. You've been praying for 10 years. Uh, what kind of husband have you been praying? She shrugged and said, that's not for God. That's not the way to pray for a husband. When you, when you go shopping, you know exactly what you want. So when you pray to God for a husband, or for anything, you must give God specific description of what you are looking for. You must be specific. So what kind of husband do you want to have? Go and bring a blank sheet of paper and a pencil. Now tell me. Okay, let's, let's try to see what kind of husband you want. Right, exactly. First, should it be Asian, African or Western? Asian. She said Western. Oh, write down Western. Second, he said, do you want him as tall as six foot or as short as five foot? She said, I want him tall. Hey, okay, write down tall. Do you want him? She's a tall guy. Okay. Do you want him pleasantly plump or do you want him skinny and handsome? She said, I want him skinny, right now, slim. Okay. What kind of job should he have? Teacher. Write down teacher. What kind of ministry? Music ministry. Write down music ministry. So in this way, young Ito got this sister to write down 10 points about the husband that she wanted. He said, now close your eyes. Can you see your husband? You have given a complete description of the husband you want. Close your eyes. Can you see him? She closed her eyes and said, I can see him perfectly. So he said, okay, take this piece of paper, stick it on your bathroom mirror, and before you go to sleep every night, close your eyes and thank the Lord for the husband that is bringing and do the same thing in the morning. And then after that show went. He went on his round. One year later he came back to the same church. As he was walking up, the pastor's wife came running and saying, She got married, she got married. 
to Joseph, who got married. He had forgotten. Remember the sister you, after write down 10 points? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Shortly after you left, the pastor's wife said, an American worship leader came with a quartet of singers to train our church in the music ministry. He stayed for three months with us and he trained our worship ministry. All the young girls were running after him, but this guy only had eyes for his sister. Before he left, he proposed to her and she accepted. And at the wedding service, the bride's mother went to the front and read out the piece of paper, <laughs> which was a perfect description of the husband that her daughter had just got married. Okay. So, singles, do you know what you got to do? <laughs> Take a blank sheet of paper. <laughs> Write down 10 points. Starting is letting be a mighty spiritual Christian, alright? So now you do, alright? What do you got to do? See, let me just give you two scriptures to explain this principle. Can you read Hebrews 11 1? Hebrews 11 1. Now faith is the substance of, the, of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith. Not yesterday's faith, not tomorrow's faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Can you understand that? What is substance? What is substance? Something you can touch. Something solid. Touch your neighbor's hand. Your neighbor has substance. But if there's nobody, you're thinking of a future husband. That future husband has got to become so real to you that he's almost somebody you can touch. In the spirit, you can touch him. Or if you're praying for a wife. Evidence, what is evidence? Evidence is something you can see. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. In your spirit you can see it, but not in your flesh. So if you want to make something real, this is creative miracle. You've got to have real, triple A faith. I call it triple A faith. Absolute, abundant, active faith. When you have triple A faith, you can perform creative miracles. When you pray for a job, don't say, I just, I want a job. No. See your job. Know exactly what kind of job it is. See exactly where you want it to be. See exactly how much salary you are getting. And then claim it from you. Right? So, apply Hebrews 11. On. Look at Romans 4.17. What does it say? Romans 4.17. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist yes, as though they live. God who gives life to the dead and calls into being those things which do not exist as though they live. In the days when I, my sight was good and I used to travel by taxi, I go and stand at a, at a place where taxis normally come and taxis are not common, I claim Romans 4.17. I'm claiming a taxi will come right now and taxis are always come. Okay, <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is, apply the same thing as Hebrews 11. You call into being something that doesn't exist as it is. 
So you pray for job, pray for hard time, pray for breakthrough, pray for healing, pray for promotion, pray for anointing, pray for power. Put Jesus first and ask God to give you what you need. <coughs> See it in your spirit. Claim it with faith. And remember, He makes all things beautiful in His eyes. Hallelujah. Yes. If you believe it, let's worship the Lord. Let's come to the front and in the middle. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Para kayo nakalinya. Dito kayo sa kita.
many of them you are craving for Jesus? Amen. You want to serve Him with your life. Yes. And when you do that, are you confident that He's going to give you your breakthrough? Amen. In His time. Yes. Amen. Amen. It may be sooner than you think. But, the Bible says, draw near to God and He will draw near. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back. Right? Do you love it with all your heart, my son, my friend? Amen. Can you dance as if you really mean that? <laughs> you know, my doctor told me not to dance, but I'm struggling to hold myself back. Come on, let's let's really dance for the Lord as if as if He is our life. Amen. Yes. All right. Okay. Come on.
CCC, you don't have to go to the gym. You get all your exercise here. And your BP goes down. Amen. Praise the Lord. This, this is a place that, that revives us physically, emotionally and spiritually. When you, when you come, usually after one week in the world, we are struggling with stress and distress and depression. But you come into the house of God and, you, and what we experience is what is called revival. Because we come here to rejoice. Because our Father loves us and Jesus died for us. And they have given us and they will make all things beautiful. And we claim it and we believe it and it's going to happen. So anybody, if you feel it's your time, your Kairos time, and you want your breakthrough, you've been waiting a long time, but Kronos time has been passing, but now it's your Kairos time. And you want to come up and claim it now by faith. The just shall live by faith. So just come up and we're going to pray for everybody who wants a breakthrough. You may be worried about a loved one back home. You may want a breakthrough in your job, employment, visa, health situation. You may just want a recharge of your Holy Spirit battery. Before we go, we always lay hands and pray for you. Because that's what the Lord does. Hallelujah. So if we worship the Lord. Let's go into a worship song. And let everybody who's looking for... I'm sure many of you want to win souls. Bring them to the anniversary in two weeks' time. You want more power to convince somebody. Ask the Lord to come and strengthen your faith. Fill you with Holy Spirit power. You have ministry that you're planning. In Christ in you is the hope of God. We cannot do anything without Him. But through Him, with Him, by Him, and for Him, we can do all things. So let's come and let's give our life to Jesus. Just come up for a prayer, for a word of prayer, and just give your life to Him and ask Him to take care of you. Yes, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and everything you need will be able to do. Let's worship. Come on. Let's Yes, Jesus, we worship you, Father God. We glorify you, Jesus. You are worthy. Accept the sacrifice of praise, Lord. And as we open our mouths today, Father God, Lord, breakthrough, healing, healing, Lord.
prayer, we declare that every prayer request has been granted. Even those who have un unsolicited prayer requests, even their prayers are answered. Thank you, Lord. That you have said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against me. Thank you, Lord, that you are building GCCI Church. Thank you for your pastors in this church and all the ministry heads. Those that involved in evangelism, life groups, and the worship ministry, most of all. And everybody who is preparing for the anniversary, yes. be with them, bless them. Yes. And we claim that this anniversary is going to be something extremely special. Yes. Use Pastor Francis, use all your pastors, use all your leaders. Yes. And let there be a mighty breakthrough yes. and a mighty break upwards yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you for it. May you be the salt and the light of the world. Yes. Jesus Christ. May the love of God the Father, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and may the fellowship, communion, anointing, and power of the Holy Spirit be with everyone here till Jesus comes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our church, let's continue to praise our living God. Yes. yes.
go by in better city. Okay. Let's go. So let us raise our hands to pray for the birthday celebrant and the Mag anniversary. Yes, Lord, Lord God, we thank you for the life of Brother Angelo Panginoon. Panginoon, salamat po sa uh, nakaraan taon, Panginoon, na itinigyan po sa kanya, Panginoon, that this year, oh Lord God, there will be more, uh, he will be more blessed, Panginoon. Continue to protect him, oh Lord God, continue to to guide him, oh Lord God. I pray for uh, knowledge and wisdom, Panginoon, sa kanyang buhay, Panginoon, na magagamit niya sa kanya pang araw-araw na gawain Panginoon. Panginoon, continue to use Him mightily, O Lord God. Continue to cover His family, O Lord God. Uh, yung kanyang mga iyong pong anak niya, Panginoon, kanilang mga anak, Panginoon, at kanyang asawa, Panginoon. Continue to cover them with the precious blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God. That no works of the enemy will prevail in their lives, Panginoon. Continue to strengthen their family, O Lord God. And continue to use them, O Lord God, in your kingdom, O Lord God. This we pray in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 We pray for this lovely couple, Panginoon. Panginoon, is tinataas po namin ang pag-asawa ito, si Brother Marlo, Panginoon, at saka si Sister Len, Panginoon. Patuloy niyo po silang gamitin, Panginoon. Continue, O Lord God, to give the desires of their hearts, Panginoon. Lord God, may you may you protect their marriage, O Lord God. May you, may you be the third string or the third chord in their marriage, Panginoon, upang lalo po tumibay ang kanilang pagsasama, Panginoon. Panginoon, alam po namin, Panginoon, na ngayon nandito po kayo sa kanilang buhay, Panginoon. Ang man po ang kanilang pagdadaan ng Panginoon ay sa kanila po mapagtapagumpaya, Panginoon. Panginoon, continue to cover your family, O Lord God, and Kinsela, Panginoon, with your precious blood, O Lord God. Lord God, continue to give them knowledge and wisdom, O Lord God. Uh, para po sa kanilang anak, Panginoon, may maturuan po nilang kanilang anak, Panginoon, at magamit po nila itong Panginoon sa kanilang mga pagdadaan at sa buhay, Panginoon. Panginoon, uh, we thank you, Lord God, for their, for their determination, Panginoon, na sila po ay nakakapagsimpa, Panginoon. Salamat po, Panginoon. Amen. At nakasama po namin sila dito sa simbahan. Ito, Panginoon, at tagtagyan ko ang iyong pamilya sa pagpapagdita. Amen. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for the blessing, Lord God, and we thank you again, Lord God, for the past anniversary, Panginoon. And we believe, oh Lord God, that all the coming anniversary, Panginoon, is lalo po magiging makulay, Panginoon. May your love uh, be burning, oh Lord God, like it was before, Panginoon, ang bako po sila pagkakilala, Panginoon. We thank you, Lord God, to give you all the praises, the adoration, and the thanksgiving in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.